So Ian Castleberry does join the Wise Guys, presented by Mike Lawrence and his great staff at Happy Hill Restaurant. Ian, how you doing, lad? I'm hanging in there. Hey, appreciate you. Um, so let's get to it. A couple of uh, topics to get to right off the bat. A decades-old gentleman's agreement regarding foreign substances could be tossed out the window, Ian, following baseball's new crackdown. Okay, this was kind of interesting. And tell us why the gentleman's agreement, or tell us about that gentleman's agreement, excuse me, and, and why that could shift. Well, today is the day when umpires are going to start checking pitchers officially in games for foreign substances. And the gentleman's agreement that you're referring to was among managers in Major League Baseball. Kind of an agreement that says, okay, you know what, I'm not going to ask the umps to check your pitchers because I don't want the umps checking my pitchers. <laughs> so that, that's been kind of the gentleman's agreement. Uh, unless, the, you know, there have been times, listeners, that you guys might remember Michael Pineda of the Yankees, was out there, uh, I think, three, four seasons ago. He just had this big gob of pine tar on his neck. I mean, and you could see it if, if you're watching on TV. And, and the Red Sox manager, John Farrell, uh, I mean, he basically he had to have the umps go out there and, and check Pineda and, and say this was just so egregious. <laughs> but now that these rules are changing, uh, apparently that there are, according to ESPN's Buster Only, there are at least three teams Let's say they're going to ask umpires to check pitchers breaking the so-called gentleman's agreement because they feel that their guys are pitching clean and not using foreign substances anymore. So the expectation is that the opposition is following the same rules. So now the umpires are going to be checking pitchers anyway. Uh, it's going to be happening between innings. So th there's not as much delay between the game. The only person who's going to be checked before he goes into the game is the closer because there's no between innings situation uh, when he comes into the game or after he's done pitching, presumably the game is over. So yeah, that's the gentleman's agreement that's being broken uh, beginning. We'll see tonight. Yeah. Go ahead, Chu. You know, last spring I had a conversation with a, a man named Clint Hurdle. He was the manager of the Pirates and for the Rockies for a spell as well. And he couldn't have been more coy when I was trying to pin him down about what's fair and what's not fair <laughs> in, in baseball. And where we ended up, where he ended up, is saying anything that is digital or technology is unfair. Anything else is fair game, he said. And it was so interesting talking with, I mean, here's a guy that was a manager for what? I mean, a dozen years or so, yeah. wasn't he in? And uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, he's a he's a baseball lifer and he couldn't have been more coy just dancing around it. But the only thing he said is no technology, no technology. Right, the the Astros saw. use technology. You yeah. can't do that. Exactly. Yeah, so. the Astros use technology. The Red Sox use technology. I mean, probably all major league teams are using it, but uh, those are the two that got caught. But, yeah, this thing with the foreign substances, I mean, I, what's going to be interesting to me is to see just how right now MLB appears to be zero tolerance. But I think you're going to find that pitchers need something. Now, they don't necessarily need spider tack, which allows them to you know, pick up smooth boulders or presumably climb walls like Spider-Man. But they need something to give them some grip. I mean, the ball's are rubbed down with mud, as you guys probably know, before every game anyway, to take kind of that sheen off the ball. There's rosin bags on the pitching mound. I don't think – I think rosin is the only thing that's going to be allowed. But, you know, in, in recent years you've had rosin and sunscreen. You know, you see players maybe the really shiny forearms. Maybe they give their, their uh, left forearm a rub if they're a right-handed pitcher. And that mixed with the sunscreen creates something – sticky along with uh, pine tar but now we're talking about like weapons grade substances here that uh major league pitchers are using and i guess the feeling is that the line has to be drawn somewhere but i do think eventually mlb is going to have to back off this a little bit especially if you guys you know you, you have guys throwing 100 miles an hour and they can't control it because they can't get a proper grip on the ball yeah you're right it is a slippery slope and in and, and one of the announcers said the other night, since that article came out in Sports Illustrated, talking about, you know, the spin rates and the tack, you know, the spider tack, that batting averages in the first week went up 11 percent from like 236 to 247. And I mean, I think you're going to see balls that aren't just 
aren't just bending like a Bugs Bunny cartoon anyhow, right? I mean, it's got to be at least a, le- a more level playing field, huh? Yeah, you'll still have the velocity, but yeah, the, the movement, you know, is especially you know, up and down, side to side. It's unbelievable it's watching zone. it. I, 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 certainly the, the difference that you, you pointed out, Coach, is, is notable. I mean, there are other factors. Maybe, you know, the, the weather's a lot warmer now. It's been humid in recent weeks. That's going to boost offense and, and the, the carrying of, of the ball as well. But it sure does not seem like a coincidence that when baseball started suspending players in the minor league, all of a sudden, guys' spin rates at notably Garrett Cole and Trevor Bauer were going down. And as you pointed out, batting averages have gone up, strikeouts have gone down. Man, it's watch this. As Ian said, it all gets underway tonight. Hey, Ian, Fernando Tatis Jr. left the Padres, went over the Reds on Saturday with the shoulder injury. What's his status? Apparently, Fernando Tatis is okay, but it is a concern because he has dealt with this left shoulder injury. Going back to spring training, uh, he, he hurt himself. Uh, well, this time he hurt himself uh, diving uh, for a ball to his right, and that injured his, his left shoulder, a left shoulder that troubled him in spring training. It cost him early in the season. He missed uh, the first nine games of the Padres season. So I guess if I can put on my Dr. Ian stethoscope, this is a, a subluxation of the left shoulder where the shoulder slips out of position but not fully dislocated. So it, it, it needs some rest. Uh, Tatis did not play yesterday, although Padres manager Jay Stingler said that he could have pinch hit if necessary. The expectation is that he's going to play tonight. So uh, as far as, as serious as this injury could be, it, it appears that Tatis is, is going to be okay. You know, Tatis has become my favorite player in Major League Baseball, and I'm finding myself taping the Padres games and zipping no to try to get his... Uh, at bats, but he is such so an un- fun to watch. he is fun to watch. But he's such an uncommon player. You know, whenever I was a coach, we always tried to get comparables. Who's this guy like? Whenever we were evaluating players, Eric Davis maybe in the late eighties comes to mind. Is there anybody that Tatis is like? I mean, this guy's unreal. That's a really good comparison in terms of body type because, yes, yeah, Tatis does not, he's not a hulking figure. I mean, he's kind of long and lean. And I think maybe he can generate a little more torque because of his longer limbs because of that. But I mean, I don't think even Eric Davis had, had this sheer power. Didn't. The, I mean, uh, Tatis leads the league uh, in home runs. He leads Major League Baseball in slugging, the National League in on base plus slugging uh, and home runs, uh, as I said. And he's and then he's also very good in the in the field as well. Mm-hmm. He's an excellent defensive shortstop. Again, I think his body type allows for that. You know, he's lean. He can move. He has great range. But uh, yeah, it, it's difficult to come up with, with a true comparison. I really I like that Eric Davis one though in terms of uh, body type. I, I love how when he rounds the bases though too, you see a little Ricky Henderson in him, don't he, you? He, he's flamboyant, <laughs> and baseball needs flamboyancy. Uh, I love the guy. Right I mean, it, I, I, I watch when he's on. I yeah, watch. He's he's that kind of player. Uh, Ian Castleberry with the Wise Guys, our Major League Baseball update presented uh, by our friends at Happy Hill Restaurant. Hello to Mike and the gang, and of course. Ian appearing uh, via the D.C. Creaseman Jewelers Wise Lines. Ian, what's played into the Diamondbacks' uh, near-historic and current 17-game losing streak? Yeah, the Diamondbacks are terrible. 20-53, and 53, worst in Major League Baseball. They've lost 17 in a row. That's their second losing streak of this season of 13 or more games. Ouch. <laughs> I mean, oh. they're just, they've lost 30 of their last 32, 40 of their past 45. But it really comes down to their pitching. The D-backs offense is pretty good. They're kind of middle of the pack in, in batting average, OPS, runs scored. But when it comes to their pitching, they've allowed the most runs in Major League Baseball, 416 runs. Their 537 ERA is also the worst in Major League Baseball. And I, I know last week I got a little numbers heavy, but I feel like run differential is, is if you look at the standing, that's a stat where you say, okay, is a team – really good, uh, you know, not just win-loss record, but how many more runs are they scoring than the opposition? Well, the Diamondbacks have allowed 107 more runs than they've scored. So (laughs) you're just not going to win. It's mathematically, it's historically impossible to win 
a lot of baseball games when you're giving up that many more runs than your opponent. Oh, my God. Uh, the poor Diamondbacks. They're poor fan base. I mean, it's enough. It's under 38 degrees out there on a, on a, on a cool day. <laughs> now right. I mean, it's hot as blazes, and yet their team is as cold as you can get. Oh, my goodness. It's like everyone wants to just jump into that swimming pool in right center field and just, like, drown. Just get this over with. Uh, Ian, we've got about um, two two minutes plus. Shohei Otani is at 23 home runs this season. Oh, by the way, he's 3-1 and one with a 2.70 ERA from the mound. And he could be an all-star as a position player or a pitcher. What, what's been the difference for him in 2021? It just This seems to be the elite year for him. Well, he's been healthy. I mean, that, that seems like a no-brainer. But he, he's gone into the past couple off-seasons, you know, like recovering from an elbow injury or an ankle injury. This past off season was the first one in which he was fully healthy and didn't have to worry about rehabbing and he could work on his skills. So as a hitter, he really concentrated, from what I understand, on strengthening his lower half, his legs, and working that power into his swing. And I think that's really helped him not just generate power, but also hit the ball hard in everywhere in the strike zone. If, if you watch Shohei Otani, he can hit, he hits everything everywhere. If it's high, he'll hit it. Outside, he'll hit it. Low and in, he'll hit it. But his lower half being able to generate power has really helped with that. And I think that's also helped his pitching to some extent. Uh, as one pitching coach, major league pitching coach said, rotation is rotation. So the, the rotation that you're using to generate power in a swing is also a uh, similar rotation to what you're using to generate power as a pitcher. But Shohei Otani as a pitcher has added a cut fastball, a cutter, to his repertoire. And I think that's really given him something to work off the fastball and his split finger. And it, he can he throws two kinds of cutters. And, and the hard one kind of breaks uh, horizontally. It breaks inside to left-handers, away from right-handers. And then he has a slower one that drops, almost like a curveball. And being able to mix those two pitches up and throw them with strikes, I mean, the the bigger your arsenal is as a starting pitcher, the more effective you're likely to be. Yeah, I mean, it's the shoe. He is just uh, he, <laughs> unbelievable, and he's he's smacking some balls too. I mean, these are if, if you talk about comparables like we were before, Babe Ruth might be the only one you exactly. can go to on this. <laughs> exactly. I mean, think about that. Going back, you yeah. have to go back over a hundred years. Uh, to find a comparable. That means you're doing something right, for sure. Uh, that's Ian Castleberry, of course. Ian writes for awfulannouncing.com, also the comeback.com. You can like both on Facebook as well. And uh, we appreciate him always being here for the Wise Guys Mondays, uh, talking uh, some baseball and, of course, Thursdays with our NFL Gold Nuggets. Ian Shoop taking turns each week. So I appreciate both you guys <laughs> for that. And you're fantastic. I love listening oh, to your Christ. baseball I stuff, man. I love it. Well, we appreciate both you guys for sure, and you're both excellent. Uh, we're both lucky. I'm, I'm lucky to have you both. I can tell you that. And, Ian, appreciate you, friend. Have a great rest of the week. Okay. I know we didn't have time, but Tuesday, oh. Wander Franco, the number one prospect in baseball, called up by the Tampa Bay Rays, going to play against the Boston Red Sox. That might be a game people want to tune in for. Real quick, Ian, uh, 15 seconds. What's this kid's ceiling? His best comparable, we've been talking to comparables, Robinson Cano. Uh, now, remember, at one point, Robinson Cano stinks now, but I mean, at one point, he was one of the best hitters in baseball. 315, averaging uh, 25 home runs, and he's an excellent uh, defensive player as well. May eventually play third base, but a uh, good defensive shortstop, fantastic hitter, makes contact on everything. You ask the question, he answers it. Right on, Ian. Appreciate you, buddy. Thanks, guys. You got it. Enjoyed it. As always, Ian Castleberry, presented by Happy Hill Restaurant. 